I'd like to, uh, uh, we're, okay, welcome back. We're going to get started. This is the Blessed Hope Part 1. Um, uh, if you didn't hear the announcement, um, these will be posted. Uh, uh, Ann is going to post them as a group on, on uh, YouTube. So um, she'll have them together on Facebook. You can't do that. You'll have to look back and find them. But all five of them will be eventually posted there, okay? So I want to I want to just talk just briefly, but and then get started. If you if you're not in Amos nine, go ahead and get to Amos chapter nine. If you have the Amplified, it's the better, uh, but it's okay. Uh, pardon? Oh, well, he, he's got it. I mean, he's Briscoe's already he's, he's already prophesied it anyway. So he's already prophesied it, which is. All right, but what I wanted to, you know, a lot of people in traditionally in the church, a lot of people, when they hear the blessed hope, they think about, what, what, what have y'all heard about the blessed hope in the past? Uh, the that is the rapture. Yeah. Pardon? That is the rapture. The rapture, yeah. I grew up in, a, in an Assembly of God uh, background, and so that was always uh, kind of what, when you heard that term, and Paul actually uses that terminology, we'll see in a few minutes. But it, the blessed hope was that, that we were going to um, join Him, join the Lord, and in in, in, uh, uh, be forever with Him, to be forever with the Lord. Uh, and I thank you. I'm thankful that that's our destiny. But what the, the blessed hope really consists of everything that has to do with the final uh, inheritance of what we're all groaning for, and that's for the incorruption. To, I mean, the corruption to put on what. Incorruption. incorruption for corruptible to become incorruptible anybody anybody look forward to having a body that's incorruptible yes. uh, it's already according to the word of God Apostle Paul it's already reserved in heaven for you and we'll be yeah <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, after my dad passed away I had a, I had a, a dream about him uh, and he had he had uh, dark hair it was in a tweed sport coat and tie, and he had a smile on his face, and, and, um, and, and I could tell that the Lord was, was showing me the, the, the age, which probably would be like Jesus, you know, around 30-ish, when he, pe- when he left this earth. Great. But, How encouraging. Yeah. Isn't that when you lose someone, that yeah. gives you a, a dream that's precious? Yeah, and, and you know, uh, because of religion, my dad didn't, didn't uh, smile as much, and he quit singing. He sang before he got saved, and then he quit singing because he was he got saved, but then he got he got into a religion, you know, where you where you weren't supposed to do this and supposed to do that, and I just wished he'd have sung his changing his his songs from Home on the Range and whatever the other stuff he was singing uh, to uh, to the to the Christian, and then I love those too. Uh, I can still hear him singing those, but then all of a sudden he quit, uh, and I wish he'd have just transferred over to the songs. Yeah, let's get let's get the get over here where we can. Okay, so the blessed hope is the is the fullness of our inheritance, the fullness of all that He's designed for us. Amos chapter nine. This is going to take me a while. Um, that's why I've got it for five weeks because it's a, it's a. I want I want to get a framework in which you can with the pieces fit together in a way. I didn't. I didn't learn any of what I'm going to show you in by reading books from people who are writing about the end times. There's a lot of end time books going around out there. I'm hearing every every week. I'm seeing on Facebook from multiple people things that 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 don't resonate with me based upon what I've seen by mainly studying what the Apostle Paul has said. And so I want to bring. It, it, and, and the purpose of it is, if it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. But if it does resonate, I think it'll give you an overall um, uh, picture and rest in God's e- e- eternal redemptive plan. Amen? Amen? His will from the beginning is clearly evident. And he had a plan. Um, and did I put that into? Yeah, I've got it in today's. Okay. Let's so Amos 9. Let's start with verse. Uh, let's, I want to start with verse. Uh, 11, not, not 9. Uh, 
In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David. That's, a so, that's so important. The fallen, but, uh, the fallen hut or booth and close up its breaches and I will raise up its ruins and I will build it in, in, as in the days of old. So if, if, you do, if you want to do a little study on the, the, the tabernacle of David, if you remember the Ark of the Covenant got stolen by the Philistines uh, and they brought it, they, they eventually put it on a cart and the, 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 the ox that was, was pulling the ark, the, the, the ox cart, uh, left its baby, which they never do, left its calf, and, and walked, took the ark on that and, and took it back to Israel uh, by, the, by God's design. So David got the ark, danced before it. You remember the story if you remember. And then he, instead of taking it to the temple, the old temple, the old covenant temple, he, he, he pitched a tent in, in Jerusalem. And he put the Ark of the Covenant in there. Which, what is the Ark of the Covenant? What is that? It's, it's, it's the body of Christ, actually. It's his death. His death. He, they were carrying around his coffin all those years. Uh, it was, it was uh, humanity, the wood overlaid with divinity. And all the, the, all, the, all the rebellion of mankind representing the three things that were put in the ark it was covered over with gold, the mercy seat, and sprinkled with blood. See, that's what, that's what happened to Jesus. You know, he took, all, he took every, all of our rebellion into him. Uh, and so they were carrying that around all the time. But anyway, he put it in a tent. And he, pinched the, he, he opened the tent flaps. And everybody, Jew, Gentile, whoever it was, there was no priest that could, you know, could go in there for you or offer for you. You could just walk in there to the, where the ark was. Nothing happened like it would if you tried to do that in Moses' tabernacle. You'd get, if you tried to go through that veil, you'd be zapped. So what he was showing David, and we talked about this two weeks ago or last, whatever it was, the, the key of David uh, that Revelation 3 speaks about is understanding grace. David had, was living in grace even though he was under the law. His Lord was our Lord. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. That's Jesus, was David's Lord. Okay? So he gave him this insight up front. And so this tabernacle of David is the, what he said he's going to raise up. Now if you go to, if you go to Acts chapter 15, they had the, the Jerusalem council... And they, they got together. They were trying to figure out what do we do with these Gentiles because they're all coming in you know, to believe, as believers. Yeah. And so uh, Paul go, gets up and he makes his, his uh, statements about why the Gentiles are included using Scripture. And then Peter got up and said, you know what? I, God sent me to this, this guy, you know, the, the uh, centurion, yeah. Cornelius' house. And the same spirit fell on them that fell on us. Fell on us. Yeah, yeah. It was confusing to them. No yeah, that's David's tabernacle being rebuilt. See, y'all see it? And then uh, James says, you know, he, then he stands up and says, and quotes this, this verse in Amos 9, uh, establishing the Gentiles being, coming in to the same uh, position as the Jews in, in the relationship with God. Amen? Uh, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that are called by my name. How many nations are called by his name? All, all of them. Oh, wow. They're all called. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. Uh, and it's the Lord who's doing this, it says. And there you go. You see at the Amplified, you'll see verse, Acts chapter 15, verses 15 through 17 as the reference to the tabernacle of David. Behold, the days are coming, and this is where Briscoe's prophecy comes in. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sows seed, and the mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all the hills uh, shall melt, that is, everything heretofore barren and unfruitful, unfruitful shall overflow with what? Spiritual blessing. We're going, to look at, we're going to look at several other Old Testament verses too, so bring your, bring your Amplified. And then I, I want to stop there for just a second because I want you to see that this is a supernatural increase that's going to be sudden and, and for a certain period of time. It's going to be people are going to, as soon as we can get the word out, they're already going to be 
saved and, and, and filled with the understanding and knowledge of who they are. It's going to be a supernatural thing, event that's going to happen. And, it's, and it can't happen until now because the church hasn't embraced the grace message. See, I used to hear, well, he can't come back yet because the church is not, is, is not without spot and wrinkle. Or the, or the last person hasn't been reached in the deepest, darkest. Yeah. So is that true that, that he's not coming back because the church is... No. See, the, 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 the opposite is true. See, now the church is recognizing it is without spot and without wrinkle. Yeah. Now, we can go, now we can go supernatural. Now we can go Superman here. Mm-hmm. Don't even need a cape to fly. Okay, so that's what he's saying, and, and, and it's going to be such a, such a fast, what you were saying, these, these kids these, that never, that were out there in all this rebellion, suddenly, suddenly, or even if they were, and they're in rebellion, but there's going to be a supernatural increase and a supernatural harvest. Remember Jesus said, uh, the, 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 the fields are white unto harvest. So there's going to, the, what, what, what he needs, the harvesters he needs, are the ones that know the true gospel. Because once you state the true gospel, those, those people, there's going to be an epiphany. <laughs> I thought it was about me. Yeah. These people are all this time thinking, well, I'm not my brother. And I don't qualify. Well, there's your first qualification. You can't qualify. And it got, he got saved. My brother got saved because of that one thing. Yeah. So this is going to be a supernatural thing in, in, in Briscoe. You know, the river coming down from Dallas or whatever, that, the, the Trinity, the Trinity River, is, is already prophesying that this is the event before I even got a chance to say it. And I love that because it's a, it's a confirmation of what I'm trying to preach here. Okay? Now, now there's a timeline here I want you to see. Okay? Uh, there's a lot of teaching going around right now that Israel is, God's not dealing with, with natural Israel anymore. And in fact, in fact, it's, it's that that, they are, that God destroyed that whole system. He destroyed Jerusalem. He destroyed the temple. Now, we, I told you last week, how did, when, did the, when did the temple worship change? When Jerusalem was. Was, was destroyed? Uh, or were the temple in, in Jerusalem? But was that when it was destroyed? Was when the veil was ripped. God, God changed it by ripping the veil when Jesus said it's finished. Because God, through the Holy Spirit, was confirming Jesus finished the work. And so the Old Covenant at that moment was changed. Not in 70 A.D. You know, people continued to try to operate under the old system, but God had demonstrated it was, He was tearing that open. So, don't, you know, anyway, I don't want you to be confused by all this terminology because they're trying to put everything in this package that just doesn't fit with, I don't think it fits with Scripture. And again, I've been looking at this since 1966 with an intensity of, of desiring for the Holy Spirit to show me. Not that, not, uh, I mean, I'm not, I can't say I have never read any books, but I, this part, I, I feel like I've gotten out of this book. Uh, by reading it, and, and the, especially the Apostle Paul, we'll see that in just a minute, okay? But look, and, and the reason I believe AD 70 is not correct is because of this, these two verses right here, the last two. Y'all, y'all watch this. And I will bring back the exiles of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink of the wine from them, and they shall also plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Now, you can spiritualize this. You can spiritualize anything. But Jesus, people, people believed in Jesus before Jesus came. But then he really came in a pers- as a person on a timeline and did it on a timeline. So you can't spiritualize it all because if Jesus never did it in reality, there would have been nothing to spiritualize, cool. to be in Christ before. Abraham believed the gospel, the same gospel we believe. He believed it because it was coming, and God gave him a vision of it and showed it to him. He put his son in the same place on the wood. So he believed the same gospel. So what I'm saying is you can't spiritualize this. Uh, there is a timeline that goes along with prophecy that's in the reality of, the, of, what, of where we're living, the time we're living. Uh, and it says, and look at verse 15. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be torn up out of their, their land, which I, ha- which I gave, past tense, to them, says the Lord your God. Now, when, when did he first give it to them? 
to Abraham. The promise was to Abraham and to his seed, the natural seed. Now, again, you can spiritualize this. And yes, we are the spiritual seed of Abraham. We're the Israel of God. I just talked about that. But there is an Israel of the descendants of the, the sands of the sea as well as the stars of the heaven. We're the stars of the heaven. They're the sands of the sea. But what I want you to see about this, if, if the AD 70 thing is true, um, then what that, what that was, if that was the final dissolution of, of the Jewish people and they were scattered and never to, never, that's never going to be, according to, the, according to this teaching, that's the end of Israel as a nation, then, how can, then Amos is a false, he's a false prophet. Because he said once, and I believe I saw that happen, the Star of David in June of Six Day War in June of sixty seven. I was watching it live when the Star of David went up there. And to, after two thousand years of not being a nation, they were being a nation. And so these two being in the same chapter, the tabernacle of David being raised up, the supernatural increase of the last harvest, and Israel going back and being planted on their land, and they will never come they will never be taken off it says right there. So no matter what, no matter what you see in the news, yes. they're never going to be driven off this land Amen. again, ever. And besides that, we're when we're going to rule and reign from there with him for a thousand years. You got to understand, Peter. Uh, in Second Peter, he says that the, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. A, a day with the Lord is it like what? The earth. The God made the earth in what? So we've got. A, he had a six-day plan for mankind, and Paul, and Peter was actually quoting Enoch. Anybody know who Enoch was? The guy that was raptured before the flood. Before the flood, he was raptured. Can't use that word, but caught up. However else you want to say that, rapture is not in the scripture. But he he got he got he got he didn't taste death. And, and we're going to see that mystery in just a minute. It says, you're not, you, I, I'm going to tell you a mystery. We're not all going to sleep. When he said means sleep, that means die. Amen. So uh, there's so many backups to the, the overall plan, but that's the main one to see is the six days and then 1,000 years of rest. When the enemy's bound and Jesus is ruling in Jerusalem with the new Jerusalem coming down with him, that's us, and reigning on the earth for a thousand years of peace. Amen? He's, the, devil, the enemy's going to be loosed. I'm, that's a whole different topic. I don't want to go there yet. But at the end of that thousand years, and I'll try to explain that later, but let's go to Matthew 23. Okay, we're through with the... Y'all, did y'all did understand what I was saying in Amos? If you need to leave, hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm a... It's going to be, it's, it's going to be there. So... Uh, now, Matthew chapter 20. Now we're going to be in the Passion Translation from here on out today. And I'm thankful I don't really have to... I'm not on a timetable per se. So I can... If you need... I, I totally understand if you've got... Uh, if you've got a, 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 pot, a pot roast in the crock pot or whatever you... So... Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 23... Matthew 23, and then you get to verse 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You are the city that murders your prophets. You are, now, now, pay attention to this because there's an important part of this that, you, that, that some of these teachings are not really representing, I don't believe correctly. You are the city that stones the very messengers who were sent to you to deliver you, to deliver you. So many times I have longed to gather a wayward people that's the Jewish nation, uh, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were too, too stubborn to let me. Uh, pride. Remember? We just talked about that. And now it's too late since your city will be left in ruins. So if that's true, okay, and I want to finish this. For you will not see me again, and everybody say, until. 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 Now, when you see the word until there, does that mean they're going to see him again? He's coming back, and he's going to come back to what is a ruined city that's being, that, that again is going to be inhabited. We just saw that in Amos 9, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what type of facility they'll have in place. Um, you know, uh, the second coming, and, 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 and hey, hold that thought, because see, now, now, now she's prophesying. Okay. 
144,000. Yeah, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, uh, about the <coughs> spiritual implications of that and also the natural. Uh, so just never, never forget there's a natural uh, flow with prophecy and there's a spiritual flow. You can't rule out the natural by trying to replace it. There's a, there's a system called replacement theology where uh, the church has replaced Israel. No, it didn't replace it. It temporarily, in, in this age of grace, in this realm, it's, it's been a combination of Jew and Gentile. But God's, we, why would Paul spend three chapters talking about Israel if it wasn't important? Why was there a need to bring it up? Because he would already know because he got caught up in heaven. We're going to see that in just a minute. And he, got, he, he saw all these, 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 these revelations of things that you couldn't even really talk about. Uh, and I believe a lot of these mysteries were he, he, he got when he got caught up there. I believe the mysteries he began to unveil to us. But what I want you to see is this. And, and Cheryl, hang on to that. To two, two more verses and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you won't see me again until you're able to say. See, there's coming a time where they are going to be able to say. And, and with such horrible situations they're going to be in. We welcome the one who comes to us in the name of the Lord. Now, if, if that was the, if, if AD 70 was the end, then where do we put this? Because this is until they're going, there is going to come a time with a remnant that's been brought back into the same land, which has always been theirs, always, you know, was given to them as a permanent, you know, uh, the, anti, the Antichrist spirit is trying his best to come against Israel because the prophecies all say that's what's going to happen. The whole world is going to come against them. I don't want to be a part of, of anti-Semitism in the sense where I'm getting on the, on the difficult side of what God's already got in place. It's, it's, to me, it just seems dangerous. But um, anyway, he, they're going to say at some point, and in fact, if you go to Israel today, that expression is being spoken. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So they're already being prepared to, to say what it says right here. Jesus said 2,000 years ago they were going to say that. Wow. So we know we're getting close because they're in the land. They'll never be off the land. It'll look like they're going to be off the land, but they won't be off the land. And then he's going to come down. And by then they're going to be saying, blessed is the name of them. And then it says every, then, then they'll all weep as a, as a mother that's lost their only child because then they'll realize what happened that he was really their Messiah, and they rejected him. But then they're going to accept him. Yay. Whoo, it's going to be a great time. And we're going to be right there. We're going to be right there with him. Uh, <coughs> hallelujah. So Jesus, leaving the temple course, his disciples came to him and pointed out the beautiful architecture. And he said, uh, uh, Jesus turned and said, Take a good look at these things. I'm telling you, there will not be one stone left on, on another. It will all be leveled. And we know that happened in 70 A.D., but not Israel. I'm not Jerusalem, just the temple. Jerusalem wasn't, wasn't destroyed until one, like 125 to 129 A.D. So it wasn't all destroyed in A.D. 70. God wasn't like, okay, I'm wiping that all off the map. Have any, they don't have any implication anymore. That's not true. It just is not true. It's not scriptural. Later when they arrived at the Mount of Olives, guess where Jesus, when he comes back to the earth with us, where is he going to step down? The Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives. Ironically, he just talks about it. He just, he just brings that up. Uh, they came out and said, one of these things, so all of these things that you're going to read in this chapter, and I don't want to go through all of them, but uh, what sign, he says, what sign shall we look for? And by the time I get through with the fifth week, which is going to be Easter, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to put this in a package that you will, that'll thrill your heart when you really see how God, what God set up for us to enjoy uh, in, this, in this full story. Uh, what, what's going to be the sign of your coming and the completion of this age? Uh, and, and people want to say, well, the age of the, the, the Jewish nation and now everything happened in, in Revelation all of it came, all of it's talking about the age they were in. Uh, he said to some, they used the verse, well, uh, uh, some of you will not taste death till, till all of these things are fulfilled. The kingdom is fulfilled. And 
what he was meaning, because it says that in Scripture, was that he was the transfiguration. They saw Jesus get transfigured. Uh, and that's really the glory of the, of the kingdom realm, is the transfiguration of Jesus and our transfiguration. We're going to be transfigured too. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of things being written in books and talked about now that we're going to actually transfigure ourselves by understanding greater and greater truths of the gospel. It's not true. I'll tell you. I'll prove, can I prove it to you? Yes. So get, stay, stay with me. Okay. And, uh, and so Jesus said at that time, and he's talking about, I think, our time, deception will, will run rampant. Now, if that's not a prophecy of today, I don't know what is. Deception is everywhere. Universalism, uh, atheism. I mean, it, it's just, I mean, er, uh, <clears throat> so beware that you're not fooled. So there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be breaking, part, breaking apart, verse uh, 6. Breaking apart of the world systems is destined to happen. So the church is not going to make everything come and into fruition until Jesus th- it comes and does that with the church. So it's, th- there's going to be a breakdown, and it's never going to be more a, a, a part of the, what the world is going to see until the very end during that time when Israel is going to finally say, look, we need the Lord here, and He's going to suddenly come to His temple. But it won't yet be the end. It will just be the unfolding. We've heard this, that this nation shall, will go to war against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be terrible earthquakes. They're, they're happening in, in exponential increases. Not like one here and one there. I mean, but they're just happening all the time. Uh, Horrible epidemics. Well, we wouldn't know what that is, would we? Would we? You know? And famines in place after place. These are just birth pains of the New Age uh, beginning. Uh, look at the important f- uh, the f- footnote. Look at the footnote C right there on verse 8. Y'all see it? You see C? Yes. Okay. Uh, the Passion Translation is aware of the distorted use of the words New Age. However, True believers in Christ anticipate the coming of a new day, an age dawning with Christ and His bride ruling the nations. Y'all see that? That's what I'm looking for. And I'm not going to be ruling it without Him being here. We're not going to rule the nations. We have authority on the earth, uh, and we're using that authority for good, just like Jesus did. He said, you go and do like I did, you know. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. All, all of that's an authority, but it doesn't change the fact that the world is still going to be uh, in a place of... It's, it, even the laws of physics, things go from order to disorder. That's why evolution makes no sense, because you can't go from disorder to order. That's a, that's a law of thermodynamics. You can't have things getting more organized. Yeah. They get yeah, less organized. So how can, how can evolution be right? Because it's, it's saying things are evolving in a good way. No, they're evolving in a bad way. So I agree with them in evolution, but in a negative. You know, it's going down. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking doom. I'm just saying the church has authority on the earth. And we're going to walk in that authority. Every believer has an authority, but it's not about changing. He said, don't, you know, Abraham wasn't saying, well, I'm going to change the world. No. He, he was looking, he said, I'm looking for another city. And, and we are too. We are resident aliens. We're, we're ambassadors. What does that mean? We're representing a place where we are here that we're no longer of. Y'all got it? We're royal ambassadors. A kingdom of priests interceding for the gospel for everybody in the world. Okay, y'all with me? All right. Uh, and then the last verse that I want you to look at, y'all can read all of this, persecution of believers, verse 14, yet through it all, the, God, the good news of, of heaven's kingdom will be proclaimed all over the world. And look at, if you look at the amplified version, that good news, it says the gospel of grace. In the amplified version, it actually says the gospel of grace as, as the good news. So the gospel of grace will, pre, will be pre, uh, claimed, proclaimed all over the world, providing every nation. See, he's chosen. There's out of every nation. When you look at 
Revelation 5 and 7, representatives from every nation is, are going to be rep are in that singing the song of the redeemed. Y'all with me? Uh, of the reality of God. And after that, the end of this age will arrive. Okay, so y'all, y'all, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got, I've got to move on. That's First Thessalonians 4. The framework fits together in pieces, the puzzle, and I believe uh, this is the order he's given it to me in, and, I, and I've already got it for next week. And, re, and when I know he's speaking to me is because he gives me these verses in, in about one minute or two minutes. And then I look them up and they all, fit into the, they, they all fit into a pattern. So I know he's speaking to me when that happens. Um, because I'm just not that smart. You know, uh, I'm wise in, in what I know the Lord wants to do by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it, I'm not, I'm, this is not about me just memorizing a bunch of verses. This is the Holy Spirit speaking truth. Okay? And, and not just through me, through a lot of others. But what I'm saying is I want to make it, I want to make it where, you, where you understand it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I use this, I've used this a lot at funerals. He was using it because the Thessalonians were being told that the, the, the uh, uh, church, that uh, the resurrection was over and they missed it. Brothers and sisters, we want you to be quite certain about the tr truth concerning those who have passed away so that you won't be overwhelmed with grief like many others who have what? We, do we have hope? Yes. And you know, I, I want to say this again, 1 Corinthians 13. There remains right now faith, hope, and love. And love. But when we get there in the fullness of our inheritance, it just, just be love. Mm -hmm. There will be no faith and no hope because they will both be realized. Yeah. The fullness of both of those. Mm -hmm. So, so there will only be perfect love remaining. Amen. For it is, we believe that if, if, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, you believe that? Yes. We also believe that God will bring with Jesus those who died while believing in Him. This is the word of the Lord. This is not, this is not Paul's. This is not Paul saying, "Hey, this is what I this is what I think." Y'all see the distinction? Yeah. Uh, we who are alive in Him and remain until the Lord appears will by no means have an advantage over those who have fallen, already died. For both will rise together. Yes. Now it doesn't say we both will be raptured together, but I mean, I, I'm, let's you know we can be nitpicky about it. Uh, for the Lord Himself will appear with the declaration of victory, the shout of an archangel, and the trumpet blast of God. The trumpet blast of God. Now, there's just a few things along this way that I want you to, to focus on. Put put ten stars around trumpet because you're going to understand what I'm saying about this trumpet uh, before the end of these five weeks you'll have such a, uh, an eagerness and anticipation about a trumpet that the trumpet he's talking about here he will descend from he the heavenly realm and command those who are dead in Christ to rise first then we who are alive by say alive and remain, um, uh, will join them, transported together in clouds to have an encounter. Everybody say encounter. encounter. Revelation calls it the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it lasts seven years. And you'll know when we get through with Daniel's prophecy that Gabriel gave him. Y'all think Gabriel is probably a reputable witness? Yes. He's one of three archangels. Two of them can't lie and one of them can't tell the truth. So you've got to be careful who you're listening to because if it's an influence by the enemy, he's going to tell you something that can't be true because he's, he's, he's the father of all lies. But he puts a little bit of truth and then he puts a little... Uh, yeah. That's it. So I'm, I, I, I believe... In this room, there's, we're going to, we're going to, some of us are going to be alive and remain at that final, at that final trumpet. Okay? Uh, hey, hold on. It just, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just chomping at the bit to get, uh, and uh, you know, and like I say, you can spiritualize this. We are caught up into the third realm now in our spirit. But he's not talking about our spirit being caught up. He's talking about us being caught up. 
Absolutely. And, and look what he says. Uh, Transported together in clouds to have an encounter with the Lord uh, in the air. Yes. And we will forever, we'll be forever joined with the Lord. So encourage one another with these truths. Don't discourage them by saying it isn't true. Encourage them with the reality. And see, we are, we can, as Americans, we can just kind of like say whatever and twist it or what. But these, these poor Thessalonians were being persecuted to death, a lot of them. I think they wanted out. <laughs> they, did, they didn't want to be in this person. We're, we're just, we're going around, eat, you know, we're eating ham and, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of meat if you're like me. But uh, y'all with me? Yes. Okay. Now, I'll, I'm going to skip chapter 5 goes a little further, but now, now go, to, go to 2 Corinthians uh, 12. Oh, I'll tell you what. Right by, right by 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 5, we're not going to go there, but read it. This is Paul's heavenly encounter. So we just, see, we're going to have a heavenly encounter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hear a lot of the same things that Paul heard when he had this heavenly encounter. And he couldn't even, I mean, it was so overwhelming to him, he couldn't even talk about it. He said, it, it, man can't even, there's no way to, to explain this. There's just no way. So he came back, and then here he goes talking about us being caught up and having this encounter. He already knew, and that's why I put this in here. Read it, because it shows what happened to him. Uh, and I believe a lot of the mysteries came out of that. A lot of the revealed mysteries came out of that. Amen? And that was 14 years uh, when, he was, when he was by himself with the Lord. As he, he was, his ministry was being developed, these things were happening to him. Okay? Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Here's where I want you. This is where I was racing to get. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. If you're going to 2 Corinthians 15, you're going to be looking a long time. <laughs> Unless you have a different version from me. You know. Okay, I've got in your notes starting with 47. Uh, but let's, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The first Adam became a living soul. But he, he wasn't, he didn't have, he wasn't perfected yet. God said he was very good, but he wasn't perfect. Uh, because you couldn't, you couldn't be perfect without union to Jesus. Okay? So however, the spiritual didn't come first. The natural precedes the spiritual. The first man was from the dust of the earth. The second man is Yahweh from the realm of heaven. The first one made it from dust has a race of people just like him who are made from the dust. The one sent from heaven has a race of heavenly people who are just like him. Amen. As he is, so are, we. so are we. I see Susan there. Hi, Susan, again. So uh, there's a heavenly race of people that are just like him. Once we carried the likeness of the man of dust, but now... Let us carry the likeness of the man of heaven. And the, way he's, the reason he says it that way, let us, is because the Holy Spirit's trying to convict us. We have it, but he, he wants us to let us, he wants, let, let us have that real revelation. Of Christ in us. Christ in us. Manifested in us. Uh, the man from heaven. Now, here's the transformation that a lot of people, which really is transfiguration. Uh, according to what happened to Jesus. To verse 50, Now I tell you this, my brothers and sisters, flesh and blood are not able to inherit God's kingdom realm, and neither will that which is decaying be able to inherit what is incorruptible. Listen, and I will tell you what? Here's that word mysterion. It said, listen up. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, he said, I'm telling you a divine mystery. Not of all of us will die. But we will all be transformed, and that word can be actually uh, transfigured. But, okay, the question I have for, the, especially with relate, rel relative to the spiritualization that a lot of these books that are being written are saying, when? The question is when. I have that in my notes. When? Can you all tell me the answer? Keep, keep. The last trump. There's that word trump again. Hang on to that trumpet because it's going to be significant, one of the most significant things in your life. 
It will happen in, it will happen in an instant. Uh, the footnote says, in an atom of time, twinkling of an eye. For when the last trumpet is sounded, the dead will come back to life. We will be, uh, we will be indestructible and we will be transfigured or transformed. For we will discard our mortal clothes and slip into a body that is imperishable. This is the blessed hope, by the way. This is the blessed hope. Uh, what is mortal now will be exchanged for what is Im uh, which, for immortality. And when that which is mortal puts on immortality and what now decays is exchanged for what will never decay, then the scripture will be fulfilled, which says death is swallowed up by a triumphant victory. And there's Isaiah 25, the two footnotes in the, uh, two verses in the footnote there. So death, tell me, where is your victory? Tell me, death, where is your sting? And then he talks about what Joseph Prince has said often, uh, um, the sin gives death its sting and the law gives sin its power. But we thank God for giving us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus. So he says, Have, be stable, enduring, live your lives with unshakable confidence. For we know that we prosper and excel in every season by serving the Lord. We are assured, because we are assured of our union with the Lord, it makes our labor productive and fruitful, fruitful fruit that endures. Amen? Y'all with me? So when is this going to happen? Or it's going to happen all at once. When? The last trump, instantaneous, the dead coming, we being changed. So it's not something that I'm going to transfigure myself through greater revelation. Y'all see the distinction? That's what's going around. Oh. That, that we're going to transfer and that we're going to take over, basically, and then when we get it all taken over, God, then we'll, Jesus will just come down and right. we'll go from there. But we really don't need him because we've already got it taken. We've already got business taken care of. See, that's not the way it's going to happen. Uh, I'm sorry, but it isn't. And, and, I, and that's the, if you, you have to answer the question, when? That is the when that, G, that Paul is saying it's a mystery that I'm giving to you. I'm revealing right now to you. And I'm revealing it right now to you. Susan put the Greek word up for you. Okay, what, what is it? She said it's called um, harpazo. Harpazo. Harpazo means to, it's Greek number 726 for anybody who wants to look it up. To seize by force, snatch away, catch up, transport. Or you mean it, doesn't, it, it does say rapture? Well, she so said we say rapture. Okay, okay. Well, so, so rapture's not in there? Well, it can't be right then. That's, 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 that's what's going on right now. That's, that's the same word, harpazo. It means that we're going to be caught up. To seize by force, to snatch away. But, that, but the, main, the main point I'm saying is when? The last trump. The last trump. Okay. Just, just hold on to that. Because okay. you're going to know what that is between, but between now and then the next four weeks. Mm -hmm. You're going to know what we're talking about in a way that it was designed from the beginning, okay? It's exciting. But we, we, we now know it's going to happen all, to all of us at the same time. Okay. Nobody's going to be ahead of anybody else. Yeah. The body is going to come in line with the transfiguration of the head. Oh. All at one time. And then we'll be exactly like him, like Paul said. Okay, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. and you see, in your notes, what was the qu only question I have in your notes? When? when. when. <laughs> Put... The last Trump. I got that written down here. Yeah. That doesn't mean President Trump. <laughs> it's ironic that Trump is. I don't know if that's pro, I don't know if that's prophetic or not, but I don't think it is. But uh, anyway, it's it, <laughs> some of these coincidences are comical in a way. But uh, look at look at uh, uh, verse forty. Look at verse fifty-seven one more time. For we will discord. Uh, let me, let me, just a second. 47. 47. No, I'm sorry, 57. I said 50, 57. Y'all with me? Yes. But we thank God for giving us the victory as conquerors through our Lord Jesus. Now look at the footnote. What does it say? Except God's grace. The, the Aramaic actually says, we... Thank God that we've accepted God's grace. And that's given us the victory. Our victory is because we accept His grace. Not because we begin to think 
and do and say all the right things and do all the... It's because we've accepted His grace. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. It's in the footnote right there. Uh, but we accept God's grace for giving us the victory. As, as that's, what you, that's how you would read that. As conquerors through the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He, bought, he sought me and He bought me just to change my mind. No. With His redeeming blood. Okay. All right. Y'all with me? Yes. Uh, now, we've got uh, one more. Second Peter 3. Second Peter 3, and then we're done for today. Everybody say yay. No, oh, I caught you. I threw that one. That was a trick. Briscoe jumped right in there. Yeah, I, I, that's why I wanted to break it up because I mean I could literally stand here till midnight tonight, but I don't think I, I think I would be standing here by myself. It's a good a good chance of that. This is Peter's last word. P- Peter's last word, and actually, and actually the last chapter, he he uh, he's talking about the preparation for the coming of the Lord and his his departure. Uh, but if, if you get to, I just want to look at two verses, chapter 3, verse 8. So dear friends, don't let this one thing, don't let this one thing escape your notice. A single day counts as what? To the Lord, Yahweh. And a thousand years counts as one day. Uh, and he's... Uh, and he got that. That actually was a quote by... There's actually a book called The Book of Enoch. And Enoch wrote a book. He lived before the flood. He wrote a book. It's not in, it's not in the canon of Scripture. But Peter's quoting it because I've read it. And Enoch is the one that said a day of the Lord is like a thousand years, a thousand years like a day. Because he was showing the divine plan 2,000 to the flood, 2,000 till Christ, 2,000 till now. Six days. Six days of, cre- of work followed by one day. How long is one day? Which matches up to the millennial reign of Christ. That's the peace that we're not going to have without the, not only just the Prince of Peace, the King of Peace, the King of Righteousness, which is like the shadow of Melchizedek. Uh, and if you look in Hebrews, in what Abraham met Melchizedek, who was a, ty- who was a pre-incarnate Christ, and the first thing that that Melchizedek did with Abraham was what? Communion. He gave him communion. Can't make this up, folks. Okay, the other verse is verse 12. And I told Tom this one time. I said, while, while we anticipate and help to speed up the coming of the day of God. Speed up. Peter is teaching us that the church has the ability to speed up and, by implication, slow down the coming day of God. The closer we get to Christ, the closer will be His coming. So the more, that's why this supernatural increase of Amos 9 is important because the more, this, you know, this, this hyper, and that's what he told Daniel, that's what Gabriel told Daniel, was that in the end, knowledge shall be increased. And I used to think that meant world knowledge. But if you read the Amplified, it's, it's talking about spiritual understanding. Knowing about what we're now knowing about. Everybody with me? Yeah. That's, that's incredible. So, uh, and then I put in your notes, there's three groanings in Romans 8. We talked about that in the first message today. What are they? Creation. Because see, now He's in us. So we're groaning with the Holy Spirit. Because we're wanting to be further clothed. We want, to, we want to have mortality put on immortality. And we want corruption to put on incorruption. That is the ble- that's the blessed hope for all of us. And we're living right there at that moment in history. Isn't it, isn't it awesome? Yeah. Um, and I want to add one more thing that, about this AD 70. And we're going to pick it up again next week. But they say all of the Gospels are written... You know, to the to the 
the time that led up to the destruction of Israel. That they were that this gospel got preached to all the nations, and then the aim, the end came. But what they're saying is the end came was that Israel was destroyed. That's what they're saying is was the fulfillment of that. But John, um, he lived in Ephesus after the after the t temple was destroyed, before it was destroyed. He moved to Ephesus, yeah. and he wrote First John. I believe he wrote Revelation there too. But some people say it was earlier. Uh, I believe it was later. I believe the Gospel of John was written later. But anyway, we know for a fact that John wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John in 85 or after. 19, I mean, A.D. 85 or after. So if, and he speaks of, he's the only person that mentions and says the word Antichrist as a, as a proper noun. What is a proper noun, Ann? It's a, it's a specific person, it's a specific person. Yeah. And, and it's capitalized in John's letter. So he's speaking, which they spiritualize and say the Antichrist is a spirit of Antichrist that's corrupting, you know, that, that is not a real person. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel says the same thing as John. So if I'm going to believe two people, I think it'll be Daniel and John yeah. because they're saying the same thing, and you'll see that as we get further along here. You all with me? Yeah, this, this, yeah it's, this is the, the guy. And you'll see wh where Gabriel tells him who it's going to be and where he's going to come from and when it's going to happen. Yeah. How about that? How about that for a, for a prophecy? Yeah. So we'll pick that up next week. Um, I just wanted to whet your appetite. But uh, Peter, I mean, Paul actually uses the term man of sin twice. Uh, but but uh, John in, in 1 John actually uses the term antichrist. But he's, uh, Peter, I mean, Paul is speaking of a particular person. And he also says that that man of sin is not somebody we will know who it is because the church won't be here. The bride won't be here because we'll be having our heavenly encounter. Um, and so it's, it, it's kind of pointless for us to try to figure out who it is. But I can tell you where he's coming from and I'll let Daniel, I'll let Daniel tell you where he's coming from. How about that? He's not coming from the Middle East. Uh, I've heard people say it was um, uh, Anwar Sadat. Not, not Sadat. Who was the little guy that was the Palestinian? Uh, uh, no. That's Egypt. Uh, what was his? Palestine. He was the guy that wore the fancy yeah. hats. Huh? No, not. Uh, Y'all all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Who? Yasser Arafat. Oh, I said, Yasser Arafat. Yeah. I heard I had heard a lot of prophecy teachers saying he was the Antichrist because he was the little little uh, they were using his size I guess to say he was the little horn uh, in, in Revelation. But I'll tell you I'll tell you where I'll, I'll show you what Daniel says and you can make up your own mind. But I'm excited about the truth of the of the balancing of the of the scriptures together. The sum of God's word is truth. You can't you can't you got to take it in its original intent. And that Jesus is the 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 the, 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 uh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was the same from the beginning. He was the light that God shined into the earth before it was even here. Yes. Light. The sun wasn't created till the third day. So, the light of the world is Jesus Christ, and that light is bringing us into the fulfillment of this whole destiny of mankind. And we get to be eyewitnesses, isn't it? Isn't that yes. awesome? Uh, so anyway, uh, those that are watching, love y'all. We'll see you. We'll see you next week for part two, and also uh, the the first part will be Romans 13. So God bless y'all. See you next time.